Hi, today I want to show you how to work with nested lists or even more precisely nested arrays in WIST and Webflow. So when you're going to need to render a list inside a list, this is what you want to think of. You want to think of a skyscraper. So this is your skyscraper right here and inside the skyscraper you have floors. We have floor one, floor two, floor three, floor four, right? So we have our floors in the skyscraper or think of it like the seating, the, the seating benches in a football stadium or something like this. So you have your skyscraper in here and you have your floors, floor one, floor two, floor three, floor four. Now inside each floor you have a dynamic amount of apartments, of units. So you have unit one, unit two, unit three, unit four, and then we have even one, two, three, four within the second floor, and we have one, two, three, floor, four, one, two, three, four <laughs> in the third floor, and we have only three in the fourth floor. So this is like the example how you want to think about that. We have floors that are being rendered dynamically, and within each floor, there is a dynamic number of units as well. So it's a list of floors and inside the list items of the floor, there is a list of units. This is a nested array, a nested list, a list inside of a list. Now let's take the technical example here. This is how the skyscraper looks from a technical perspective. We have an array we know that because it has like the square brackets here. That is a list that indicates that we are going to work with a list here. This is a list of objects. There is one object, the second object, the third object, and the fourth object. Now, inside this object, we have data. So the first part, the first floor, is just the configurator telling us it's the first floor and that this is the second floor, the, the third, and the fourth. This is just this parameter that tells us the floor, which floor it is. Now, inside the floor, as you can see, we have the floor in here, but inside the floor, we have a dynamic amount of units. For example, this has four units, four, four, but this has only three. So it's a dynamic amount of units that we have inside of a floor. So since we are going to render a list inside a list, we need to use another list, another array. An array is basically the data structure for a list. And you're going to see we have the square bracket and we have the square bracket. And inside we have objects. We have unit 100, unit 200, unit 300, 400, and so on. And we have that same structure for all of the items. So we have this list of floors and inside each floor object, we have another list of units. And this is a nested array. This is a list inside of a list. And we want to render this list in WIST to be the floors. And inside each floor, we want to only render the dynamic units related to the floor that is related to the list item that we are on right now. Let me give you an example. If I'm on floor one, I want to render one, two, three, four list items. The same for one, two, three. But if I'm on floor four, as we can see here, floor four, we have one item less. So we want to have four floor four to have one item less, only three items, not four as in all of the other ones. So this is the setup because we want to dynamically reference it. And the way we're going to do that is using two render list actions. And let me wipe out everything I did here and let's start out blank. So we have two items that have the WIST attribute applied to it. And big thanks to ChatGBT for helping me come up with this example uh, JSON file. Thank you so much, ChatGBT. So I have just like a skyscraper in here, right? That is just a diff block. And inside the skyscraper, I have the floors and they have the width attribute of floor because I'm going to render them dynamically as the floors. And then inside the floor, I have the apartment 
which has the width attribute of unit because I'm going to render the units, the apartments, dynamically for each floor inside the floor item. That is a nested list. Now if I go back to WIST, let's click on the floor and let's create the action related to the floor. So now I want to go to render list and I want to return just simply our nested array. That is the one in the variable that we just talked so extensively about together. Now we see we have the data. We have the floors with the nested arrays for the units inside of them. Now we're just going to add an iterator that is just a variable starting with return zero. As you can see in here, that is an iterator. And now I will just be rendering that list. So let me refresh and we will see we have a list. We clone the floor item four times and we render this dynamically. Now we want to work on the unit. So let's create a new action for the unit and let's do a render list action here. Let's type return and now here comes the magic because we don't want to do something like this where we add zero in here and then we do dot units like this because then if I would do it like this and actually that's not fully working because I don't have an iterator selected yet but if I would do it like this, and this is a common beginner mistake, I get the same count for all the floors. <laughs> but we know that the fourth floor only has three. So what we're doing in this example here, we're going to render now the, the item for the first floor inside of every of the floors, which we don't want, because we need to set this dynamically. Or even if you would leave that out, you would just get like an undefined. So what we want to do here is we want to add our V iterator because if you look into the structure in our variable again, you will see that we're going to render this list. Now inside of this list, we have those items. Each item is connected to our V iterator because we're, when we render the list in here, in the floors, we apply V iterator on top of this nested array variable. So now when we go in here and render, want to render the dynamic units, we can just simply, oh, that was the wrong variable. We can just simply add our V dot iterator in here and re-render that. And let's make sure that everything is set up properly. And we would now get for the first item, we would get like the first floor, of course, we have to work with the template item now. And I would need to use dot units in this example right here. So I get the dynamic units for the first floor. Now, as you can see, I'm getting the dynamic values in here. I will get the first item has the first floor has four units. The second floor has four units. The third floor has four units, but the fourth floor only has three units available. So this is how we're going to get this dynamically. But now setting text is also something quite interesting. So let's really quick go to set text onto the unit and let's just set the text in here. Now for simplification purposes, I'll just take the same setup here because we are already pretty far. And now I want to just simply again add our iterator on top of here. Okay, just like that. And I want to do dot unit, right? Now we have 100 and so on. Now if I'm going to re-render that, we will see that we have quite some issue here <laughs> because the first floor will show 100, 100, 100, 100. The second floor will show 600, 600, 600, and so on. So something isn't quite right. And we should actually do that lowercase or now we need to do this uppercase because I made a typo in my array, but that is not the issue. The issue is that we need to use a secondary iterator now because we applied the iterator to this list, which is great, but it is hindering us now from rendering those floors dynamically because we're just duplicating the data from the first floor all the time. So actually we render those floors dynamically 
but the data we're getting to set the text inside of the floor is only for the first floor item. So in order to get that data dynamically, we need to create a secondary, a second iterator that is unaffiliated with the render list action so that we can get that dynamically. And here, this is how we're going to do that. And why, while we're already doing that, we may just actually replace the secondary iterator to the secondary iterator, just to make sure. Um, so when we render the list inside of here, best practices is moving that to the secondary iterator as well, but it will not resolve our issue here. But what will resolve the issue is replacing the V iterator that we're going to apply on the nested array with our secondary iterator. Now you will see that of course I did a bad Webflow design here and I didn't calculate any margin in, which let me fix that right now. But we solved that issue as well. So let's add a little bit in here. Let's do 0 0.35 and we do rem so that it also looks beautiful. But this is how we solved that issue. This is how we're going to get Look, look at that, how great that looks now. This little margin did a whole lot for me. And we have 100, 200, 300, 400, uh, 500, 600, 700, 800, 900, 1,000, 1,100, 1,200, 1,300, 1,400, 1,500. Now you say, why isn't that 1, 2, 3, 4, 5? That's just because the way I did that, I set the Webflow stuff up because WIST is just following the patterns how you set that up in Webflow. So that was just, that is, that is on to me, the way I set up this grid in Webflow. Now, thinking back, I could just do this as a grid, just like this, and then it would be different because now, also something very valuable when you render list to know the way you set up the structure in Webflow will heavily determine the way that those lists are being rendered in WIST. WIST is just following the guides and the HTML principles that you lay as, as the foundation for WIST to do its job. So you always gotta, gotta also have that layout working. But this is how you're going to do a nested list, an array inside of an array. And we're going to get the dynamic data in here. So thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for all your time. I really appreciate that. Just thank you so much. Just thank you, thank you, thank you so much for all your support. This really, really, really means a lot to me. And yeah, thank you so much for your comments, for your wonderful Discord messages, and just for being part of this wonderful WIS community and so encouraging and so kind in the comments. I really appreciate that. And this really means a lot to me. So thank you so much for watching the videos. Thank you so much for all your support and see you as always tomorrow. Bye-bye.